Hello everyone and welcome back to The Games Must Go On, a series where everything comes with an asterisk. Where today we're asking the question, can you beat Pikmin 3 without the whistle? It's finally time to wrap up the trilogy, so let's get right into this. The rules here are simple. We're going to be playing this on the Wii U's gamepad, so the ZR button is going to be banned for calling our Pikmin, the B button and shaking the gamepad are going to be banned for dismissing and charging our Pikmin, and lastly, we're not going to be allowed to use the dodge whistle for obvious reasons. Now, I would like to mention that these rules don't apply during cutscenes where we don't have full control over the player. But with that out of the way, let's get right into the run. Unfortunately, the game says otherwise, as almost immediately when we hop into the game, we get stopped by two tutorials with a very simple goal. To whistle your Pikmin which is kind of a problem when we can't use our whistle. But I have accounted for this with a very small rule in our rule set. That being that cutscenes where we don't have full control over our player don't count. And this is why. That's because while we're here, we can't do much of anything except for follow the game's rules. We can't even move. And because of this, this falls into more of a cutscene than a tutorial. So I will actually allow myself to begin the game before failing the challenge. So let's actually move to ALF segment. ALF segment has the second tutorial, which just like Charlie segment, I will be allowing. But there is one other small thing that I wanted to bring up. That being that Copites are way weaker than actual Hockitations that were in the first two games. And we can see this when we try to attack the flowers or the sheer grubs that are crawling around. So we're not going to be able to just fight enemies with the captains like the last time. Instead, we're actually going to have to play the game somewhat as intended. With that, we can move to day two where we see that the old problem is back. That being, we can't activate working Pikmin, we just have to wait for a working Pikmin to either finish its task or die trying. So, that's great, but for some other news on this day, we actually got ourselves Rock Pikmin, which take this problem to another level. This is because they do a lot of damage when thrown, because they're rocks. However, once they're on the ground, they'll begin rolling at their opponents, doing minimal damage. This is a problem because we aren't able to use the whistle to pick them up and throw them again. Instead, Rock Pikmin will just continuously do minimal damage. After getting Rock Pikmin though, we were able to go ahead and rescue Brittany, get the go here function, and we were almost able to make it to the first boss. So we'll go ahead and take that down tomorrow. The first boss is the Armored Maudad, which is actually kind of difficult at first because of all the crystal plating it has for armor. So I actually went ahead and grinded up a couple of Rock Pikmin before fighting it, which I then used on its tail in order to break it apart, giving us an opening for Red Pikmin and with enough damage, it actually goes down without too much of a problem, giving us a cell phone that we can use to get to the next area. Our next area is the Distant Tundra, where our first goal is to reunite with Brittany, who falls out of a ship at the beginning of this day. Now, that isn't that much of a problem, because we just have to build two bridges. I just lost quite a few Pikmin trying to do it. That's mostly because rock Pikmin, like regular rocks, are completely flammable and are weak against fiery blowhogs. So, I did lose some Pikmin there. But at the end of the day, I was able to build a bridge and reunite with Brittany, so I'd call that a success. The next day, I decided to prepare for the Venomous Fosbat. And one thing that I did is I decided to collect these dust petals, which could have easily removed 25 Pikmin from existence if it weren't for a cutscene that we can play by lighting up the room with yellow Pikmin. Once we light up the room, all the Pikmin here will actually run into your party, which will save them from dying at sunset. Now for the boss itself, it's actually a lot easier than expected. Now, the first phase, I have to go ahead and light up the room, which would normally require me to build an entire bridge, but I was able to only use half of the bridge before throwing Brittany across and then using Yellow Pikmin to light up the room, putting the boss in its second phase. The second phase could have actually been pretty deadly because of one of the moves that it uses, where it'll actually go ahead and eat a bunch of Pikmin in a wide range. However, this is actually kind of negated from another attack that it has, 
Once you throw a bunch of Pikmin onto it, it'll go ahead and shake them off before showering them in poison, which would normally be bad because poison in Pikmin 2 was an insta-kill thing because we couldn't whistle our Pikmin to save them. But here, it acts more like a fear state, as the Pikmin will go ahead and run around for a little bit before calming down. This, however, is actually somewhat helpful, because this'll make it difficult for the boss to eat a whole bunch of Pikmin because of how scattered they'll be. With enough throws, the boss will go down, and we're surprisingly able to leave with 82 Pikmin remaining. With Charlie in hand, we can head back to the Tropical Wild to try to take down our next boss which was actually kind of difficult because it's really good at spreading out your Pikmin and then using an attack that covers almost the entire arena. It's definitely one of the most deadly bosses out there, but with enough Pikmin sacrificed, it goes down like all the rest. Our next area is the Twilight River, and our first goal here is to rescue the winged Pikmin, which thankfully we're able to do in a single day. But of course, now we have to talk about winged Pikmin. The best way to talk about winged Pikmin is to talk about Pikmin that are up on a ledge. That's because if a Pikmin's up on a ledge, we physically cannot save it. Normally you could just whistle it down, but you can't do that in this challenge for obvious reasons. Winged Pikmin act the same way because the wings. We can't actually activate them because they're too far away from the ground. Meaning once they've completed a task, we can't grab them again. They're just permanently softlocked for the rest of the day. There are two good things to mention though. The first being, if a winged Pikmin brings something back to the onion, the Pikmin will be saved at the end of the day. It'll climb back into the onion all on its own. So we can still grow our Pikmin population, however it will be much slower since, even at the onion, the Pikmin can't be grabbed normally, so it will be softlocked for the rest of the day. The second piece of good news is it is possible to grab winged Pikmin as soon as they're faded, and Pikmin become faded as soon as they finish a task. Which means, as soon as a winged Pikmin drops off a pellet back at the onion, it is possible to grab the winged Pikmin before it flies upwards. However, this is not a consistent strategy, but it can help us to keep more winged Pikmin at once. With this information in hand, we can begin to grow our Pikmin population, just very slowly. And now all we have to do is make our way to the boss. If only it was that simple. This is because some of the bridge parts that we need are up on this ledge, that we need winged Pikmin in order to carry. This is a problem because the only way to get up here is by throwing a captain onto this mushroom, as well as your winged Pikmin, in order to get up here. It's time to learn about juggling. You see, winged Pikmin can immediately be activated once they're faded, and once you throw them, they're faded on the ground for a half a second before they fly upwards. Which means, if you're fast enough, you should be able to catch the winged Pikmin faded before it flies upward. And with precise timing, we can do just that, which means we can actually make it up here with winged Pikmin. It's just more precise than you'd expect. With that out of the way, we can actually reach the boss, which is actually surprisingly easy. While we're supposed to use Winged Pikmin in order to attack, we can use Yellow Pikmin instead. And also, the boss attacks are really easy to avoid by just using multiple captains, allowing one captain to take the damage, and having the other captain with all of your Pikmin to be at the ready to throw. So it goes down without too much hindrance, and we're able to retrieve Louie. That night, Louie escapes, so we have to go back to the Garden of Hope to rescue him. On the way, we get our hands on Blue Pikmin, the last Pikmin type of this challenge. And these guys, like always, can go underwater, so there's not much to talk about. In order to get to the next boss, we do have to take down a mini-boss, this larger Hermit Cromad. But, like all the mini-bosses in this run, it's truly not a problem as most of the time when it attacks your Pikmin, you're able to deal enough damage to it so it'll actually drop your Pikmin before it gets a chance to kill them. So it's really not that big of a deal. Other than that, there's not much to talk about on the path to the boss. The boss itself, however, is a different story. The Quaggled Mireclops is actually a pretty difficult boss because of how easily it can scatter our Pikmin with no way for us to whistle them back to regroup them making it actually a pretty difficult and devastating fight. But just like the Mirror Slug from before, it can go down with enough attacks. 
so eventually we were able to defeat it, but not after losing quite a few Pikmin. With Louie in hand, we can begin grabbing all the miscellaneous fruits that we've missed. Surprisingly, none of these other fruits really require any additional strategy. Well, that is except for two. These being from the Shaggy Longlegs. While these Longlegs should be the easiest in the entire franchise because Pikmin will actually climb up the legs to attack instead of just attacking the feet, this isn't entirely true because whenever the Beady Longlegs shakes off your Pikmin, they actually enter a stunned state which is basically this game's equivalent to being dazed, which means the Pikmin won't attack again, so we only have a limited number that we can use per day. But, with enough throws, and being quick enough, we were able to defeat both BD Longlegs, giving us all the fruit in the game, and allowing us to move to the Formidable Oak. Truthfully, the Formidable Oak isn't as difficult as I thought, we can distract the Plasm Wraith by continuously looping Brittany around the map, while using Charlie and Alf in order to clear out the way. And by doing this over the next few days, I was able to beat the Formidable Oak. All that's left now is the Plasm Wraith. This boss is nothing to laugh at. It has a whole bunch of health and uses hazards to attack, making it extremely effective. But I do have a strategy that I've been using this whole run, that being to use more Pikmin because eventually a pea shooter will take down an elephant if it has enough ammo. So, while it did cost the entire blue Pikmin population, with enough throwing Pikmin and enough Pikmin death, we were able to beat the Plasm Wraith, meaning yes, it is possible to beat Pikmin free without the whistle. And that concludes the entire trilogy. So with that, I would like to say thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. Goodbye.